Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. My name is Ibrahim Diallo and today I want to show you how to build a website from scratch. Basically we're going to be building using nothing at all. Well, we're going to be using a computer and uh, the few basic tools that are, are directly available. So it's going to be fairly easy. We're going to start from the beginning. Um, uh, the main the website we're gonna be building is a blog so I'm gonna show you how I go about it um, if you check my blog you'll see that it's very simple there's not much going on and uh, I'm gonna take you through the process of creating just that um, we're gonna come up with a design on the fly I don't have anything set up at all um, I'm gonna be uh, building it live right now I mean the video you're watching is gonna be a little bit uh, accelerated because, you know, I don't want you to be sitting here for like two, three hours just watching me type random stuff. But anyway, um, I'm going to be talking over while uh, the, I already recorded a video. So I'm just going to be talking over and giving you a quick explanation of what is going on and what is happening. All right. Anyway, so let's get started. For the first step, um, I'm using a Windows machine. Um, it is there's basically nothing in there I'm gonna be using us like before getting started uh, instead of trying to build a website might as well try to, see, to build the content of what you're going to display um, I'm gonna start directly by writing a blog post so this way I can uh, I know exactly what I'm uh, what what the theme of the website is what it's gonna be talking about so like like my current blog instead of uh, starting right away with getting like a WordPress blog or something like that I just started writing I mean first you write then you'll figure the rest out you know the, the, the other part, stuff are not so crucial you know I mean you, f for what it's worth you can also you can just serve some .txt files and uh, yeah that as long as people can reach that that's your blog because the goal of your blog is to show people what you have to say it's not to show them your HTML skills or some JavaScript skill or programming skills uh, you just want to show people what you're writing so let's start with that um, I opened a new file in uh, uh, in my text editor if you look at it I'm currently using gedit it's uh, I'm, I'm used to using this one because uh, that's the default one you have uh, on Linux uh, on Ubuntu specifically and uh, it's very nice I mean it doesn't do anything really <laughs> you just you can just uh, start typing I mean I prefer it a little bit more than notepad because uh, it also has code highlighting or some uh, other small features you know it wraps around nicely and uh, yeah I mean it's easy to copy and paste it into other prog programs I, I don't know if you ever tried copying some stuff from notepad sometimes you paste it and it doesn't uh, translate the new lines or stuff like that nicely so yeah I use uh, gedit it's really nice and it, it's free you can go online and try to find it just type gedit on Google for Windows and yeah um, so right now as you can see I'm just writing a blog post um, this is what I'm going to be uh, uh, I'm gonna be building a website around this so it's not uh, I mean it's not like I have much to say because you see I'm writing on the fly right now I mean I don't even care about errors if I'm making any uh, grammatical errors or anything like that I it doesn't matter that's the beauty of this editor it doesn't uh, it doesn't say anything even if there's error it just keeps quiet just no distraction you keep on writing um, that's something that uh, a lot of people uh, make a mistake like, like instead they start using something like word or some any any other fancy uh text editor i mean it's sure they allow you there's so much that it allows you to do um it can allow you to format your text nicely and everything basically it just allows you to do anything you want but sometimes too many options can be a problem so here i don't have any options i just have writing that's the only thing I need right now I'm not even going to do research research is this is a, I will say the second thing I do so first of all when I write I just uh, put what I believe like you know something in my mind like some ideas I have not influenced by anything so I put them down or in a blog post and then after that when I'm done I can go and try to find confirm some things um, because you know sometimes you can write something and then all of a sudden you see that it's not true 
and uh, the only thing you can do about it is just delete it and I'll, I'll do that sometimes I'll just delete a lot of stuff but yeah anyway that's how it is um, yeah so I'm gonna include uh, I'm gonna try to include this text that I'm writing right now um, this way you can read it it's just I'm just what is it what's the title creating a website from scratch and I'm giving you a suggestion and what I think is important to, to think about when you're getting started and uh, yeah anyway as you can see it's very simple it's just text not uh, not even uh, well formatted or uh, it doesn't uh, like if there's any mistakes if you read it you'll probably see some mistakes um, yeah, look at that I'm writing thank you for reading and uh, I might be done now yep saving it um, by the way this video is accelerated um, if you notice I act, like even though it's accelerated I'm still writing slow because you know I'm, I don't type that fast and uh, that's something uh, people think if you're a programmer you need to type really fast I mean I saw, saw some amazing programmer that type faster than I can think I mean good for them but for me I don't really care I mean as long as I can put my thoughts in there and that's what matters anyway so now I'm opening a LibreOffice it's kind of like a free version of Word like actually an open uh, source version of it I'm just gonna paste uh, my text in here now that I finish writing it and uh, here now I can start looking for mistakes and try to edit some things see what's wrong formatting and stuff like that um, even but the overall like the way people are gonna see the website right now I don't really care like how it's gonna be formatted on the website uh, that doesn't matter to me yet uh, I'm just putting as much uh, info I think that I would like to share with others and uh, I yeah it's it, it, there's nothing much happening really um, okay here I edited like a sentence but yeah all I want to do is create the meat of my website because imagine this if you have a very nice template flashy website that looks great but you you don't have something to show for like you don't like why is it there are you I mean if you're into design then good but if if you wanna sh if you wanna show something to your users and uh, you don't really have that you only have a fancy website then what's the point so yeah so that's what I'm doing here really I'm focusing on what I'm gonna show the user and uh, there's there's a few ideas uh, I, I'm like because I've been building websites for a while so I do have an idea like how my website is gonna look like um, but before I start creating a whole blog engine or something like that I think I, I would just wanna I just wanna show people um, what I wanna what I have to say and uh, so I'm gonna start by creating a single web page uh, all in HTML I mean if I don't have two two blog posts why do I need to, to have too many things going on so I'm just gonna my goal here is just gonna be it like at least in this first part I'm gonna be creating one page and uh, making it in HTML and uh, yeah that's it and I'll be serving that to the users anyway so I finished editing now I opened the sublime text editor it's also a, it's just another editor but I use it mostly for code like if I'm gonna write uh, uh, if I'm going to redesign my website for example I can do like a quick template here um, all it, it it's an amazing editor um, it's uh, I think there it's a paid uh, application but I have like the unregistered version yeah you can it, it still allows you to use it fully you just I don't know what what are the limitation anyway so yeah here as you can see I'm starting to write HTML right away I mean a lot of people suggest you first designs it like in Photoshop or GIMP but uh, I'm kind of used to writing HTML. I, I feel like if I do it in uh, in Photoshop, I'll be limiting myself. Like, because, uh, okay, first of all, if I do in Photoshop, I'll save it. And then after that, I have to convert it into HTML. And I don't have that time. So anyway, uh, if you notice here, what I did was uh, I copied some uh, uh, default CSS from a previous file I used before. It's just to reset all the styles to make sure that they're they appear consistently on different browsers and also if you notice like when I write I close all my tags I'm very used to uh, using XHTML XML so you know I make sure all my the tags that I open I close them right away so here's the page that I just created I open it on a browser and there's nothing only a title so that's a good start it means uh, we're getting there okay so 
very simple things. I'm just going to add a header and, uh, you know, title of the blog. I called it Scratch Blog for now because, uh, well, you know, we're creating a blog from scratch. And uh, the motto is a blog about creating stuff from scratch. Um, yeah. Okay, here I'm uh, just uh, thinking what type of... Uh, tags I'm going to be using. So I'm yeah, using a header tag, which is kind of useful for Google to understand what you're talking about. And uh, here, um, if you notice, I first added a P tag, a paragraph to write the date, but and then I, I just removed it because I remember that uh, uh, when you have a header tag and then right after you have a paragraph, that paragraph is supposed to describe your header. So I don't think it's a good idea to put uh, the date in there. Um, there's other ways to put the date in a way that Google or search engines can understand. But for here, for now, I don't need that. I'm just, I just put a span um, so that my next, like my par first paragraph on the page will be uh, describing my title. Anyway, so I pasted all my uh, blog, the blog post I wrote, and uh, I'm going to make sure I, I, I surround it with paragraph tags. And uh, yeah just paragraph and then them you don't need to do that because HTML doesn't care about it but anyway I did it so yeah here's how it looks I know it's awful <laughs> yeah that, that's because I added the reset and uh, removed all the styles uh, yeah it, it just looks awful so now we're gonna start creating some little styling I'm, I'm gonna add very little styling if you notice the way I write my classes I use this uh, I will have kind of a variation of this BEM or BEAM whatever they call it format is just it, it's just a good way to organize your your class's name it allows it allows me to write a single class without using nesting really in, inside CSS it's uh, I mean for me at least I think it's very readable so I just add that okay anyway so I added a small logo I didn't put any image yet but I put it some space with for it and uh, now I'm adding classes everywhere to make sure I can uh, I can control those from the CSS side. The CSS is an external file. I call this style that CSS for now. Um, and uh, here I was, I guess I was thinking what to add. <laughs> yeah, I misspelled footer. So, ah. <laughs> okay. So I added a footer and then uh, just, you know, basic things, copyright, whatever. Um, yeah. And here I made a mistake. I wrote scratch book, but you know, what are you, what can you do? Scratch books, scratch blog, whatever. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, this is not necessary, but I added the language to be in English. The website still looks bad, but well, there's no style. So now we're going to start writing CSS. One of the cool things about HTML and uh, is like you can use CSS to basically make everything looks beautiful. Um, here, I kind of have a vague idea what I want. I just started doing things on the fly. Uh, I put a blue color and, uh, you know, I don't think I liked it. I mean, I tried different things. I didn't like it, so I changed to an orange. And, uh, well, you know, flat orange color. And uh, copy that to my code. I use, if you notice, I used uh, uh, Chrome's uh, inspector to test different colors live. And then when I'm satisfied with one, I will just uh, copy that color. By the way, when on Chrome, when you click, uh, when you select a color, you can click shift click on the little icon next to it, and it'll change from RGB or hex or any other value you want. All right, so right now all I'm doing is designing. Um, I'm trying to make it look a little prettier, trying different sizes, and uh, I think I was happy with this one. So, oh yeah, I always always important to add padding because uh, otherwise you're text get, can get really close to the edge especially if you're checking uh, you're using it on the phone like you might see your text being on the like on the corner of the screen so it's a very good good idea to put padding over there anyway what's next um let's watch a little bit yeah here i'm just formatting the page header um just that little section on top and make the the formatting the motto and uh, the, putting the logo on the side and you know make it look like a little website I think it would be a good idea to add some padding there too yeah that's that's better uh, I haven't made any 
logo yet but I, f I think I should do a little uh, tutorial also like a little video like this to add a logo because it's a nice process I mean I'm not a professional logo maker but sometimes it's interesting you can open Photoshop or anything you use basically just to create something cool okay this is my little trick I use to make the website responsive I don't use all the time those uh, uh, media tags I just set it to set the width to 100% set a minimum width and a maximum width and also add a padding um, that way when the screen resizes I always like my text always look good and I know the minimum size is 320 but I to be safe I go to uh, 300 and from there I can uh, you know pad it a little bit I know that content still looks awful but here's one cool thing I, I learned recently I mean your goal is not just to cram as much content on the page you want to make it look readable and uh, you know if you have like large paragraphs with like uh, 10 15 lines it, it's very easy for the user to get tired while reading so um, I'd like to put a lot of space on it now I don't remember the blog where I read that and it totally made sense to me so I, sh I should try to find that and link back to it yeah here I changed the font from Arial to you know um, times anything that looks good really um, I usually like the Arial font but uh, I'm I've been experimenting with times because usually it's better on print but I'm trying to see that lately I've been reading it on ta uh, on the screen and it kind of looks good so I'm happy with it anyway here I'm gonna start uh, like those spans I added uh, of course they're inline so I set them to block to have this little um, to have to have it break into the new line to make it look nicer oh I guess I forgot to add a class header over there class name so I'm gonna add that and add a margin and add more space that's the goal not that's my thing now I put a lot of space everywhere you gotta put space space and everything needs to be big I mean it's very hard to read on a screen it's not like I mean even some on, on a like if you're reading uh, print media when there's a lot of text it's very hard to read so yeah it's a it's a good idea to make your font as big as possible without being too big like kind of here it's became too big I'm gonna make it smaller so yeah making it big and readable and also like there's a lot of blocks that make this mistake they make their text really gray and hard to read um, I try to not go for a hundred percent black but I tone it down a little bit like a very faint gray you know like here I just put uh, one 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 for the color but yeah okay like styling the photo a little bit just to make it consistent with the rest of the website um, you know making it look good so yeah but adding a background color text color make it close to white Oh yeah, I forgot a paragraph on that too. This class is not necessary since it's the only one. But anyway, I put it there. Um, it's a good thing to oh, to organize your CSS well because this is something you're going to be looking at all the time. Every time you're making a change, you're going to be coming back to this file. So might as well make it look as good as possible. Anyway, um, yeah, I think, I, oh yeah, I made a typo there. I, I meant to put zero and instead of margin, I needed to put padding so yeah to make it look a little better and there you go we have a website we have a header and uh, the content and the footer there's nothing else needed I mean here I'm just testing how the uh, a link looks like um, yeah digital ocean turn that into a link just blue and when you hover on top of it it becomes uh, orange uh, I mean sorry and underlined so yeah okay yeah, here I'm also try to add an image to make to style the image nicely. Um, it it's a good idea to do that because you know anything you write you're gonna need some images. Oh, and yeah, my uh, screen recorder crashed, so I had to redo it. I didn't really uh, save, but yeah. Anyway, I added it, and uh, you can I'll provide the code so you can see. So you see the image in the middle so it looks really good. Anyway so yeah sometimes I reuse code so for example I'm using code here from my blog from my own blog I just copy uh, some of the text uh, the formatting like if you add a list and all these type of other things in there um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I like to call it M down because I use Markdown to actually add content on my page. Um, here, I just wrote uh, used plain HTML. But once we're gonna get to the point where we create a dynamic website, like a real blog, yeah, we're gonna get to that. But for now, this is what is it, it is. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add that on the. Yeah. So yeah, I ruined my image, but I'll have to update a few things to make sure um, they all work consistently. So anyway, this is what I do. Um, I quickly created a website from scratch and uh, it actually looks not so bad. We only have one page and that's all we need. We have one blog post and if we have a second blog post, it doesn't hurt to rewrite all these things and uh, just keep on doing like that, like every time we upload a new HTML file. But uh, on the next videos, I'm going to show you the advantage of having a dynamic language, something like PHP, so you can dynamically generate this uh, and save all this information in a database that you can later, that that is much easier to handle, you know. Um, yeah, creating a website from scratch is kind of easy. I mean, look at that. We did this in uh, what it's been I've been talking for less than 20 minutes but yeah anyway that's it that's all the website we don't need to add any navigation or any um, anything fancy really we don't need it right away it, it will come with time because let's say if you have one page you don't need navigation once you're gonna have more than one page then we're gonna think about it so take your time to build things one thing at a time and after that we'll think about the rest anyway thank you for watching uh, again, my name is Ibrahim, and uh, this is only the first part in a long series that I'm planning to do. We're going to be writing a lot of, uh, ri like writing all sorts of technology to create websites or any sort of technologies. Um, stay tuned for the next episode, and uh, you will hear from me soon. Thank you. All right.